<laughs> Who's this? Me, me. From where this sound From is coming? You, no. I'm beside you. It's my voice. What the heck? Nobody has mentioned that cameras talk. You know it. It's the impact of drinking so much coffee. What are you thinking about? No way, that's real. Am I dreaming? Are you afraid? Coward? Shut your lens up. I'm asking for respect. What do you want from me? I'm here from four or five months. I'm suffering from vision problems from a while ago, especially in low light, and I can't see details. I'm still young, and I don't want to die right now. I thought you noticed that. I always turn myself off to rest my vision a bit. I actually didn't pay any attention to that. Man will be man. We never paid attention to our feelings. Behave, you are not my girlfriend. And what now? How to improve your vision? Humans get glasses, what about you? We are alike, in my case, and if you may, get me a better and sharper lens with wider aperture. Please take this prescription from my doctor. This scanner should replace the current lens with a Sigma 16 f1.4. Dr. Cam. It's so weird, I'm getting scared now. I'm also a doctor, man. And should I pay for that? Do you know how much is costing this? Around 400 euros? Do you have an idea about that? Okay, I will check, I will check. Add to basket and buy. How's it going guys? This is Mahdi Takash here and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, I do videos on tech, life experience stories, tips and tricks tutorials. Welcome on board. First thing, if you get the Sony ZV-E10 or any Sony APS-C cameras with the kit lens, then from my point of view, it's a good starting combination until you figure it out which lens is suitable for your upgrade. However, in this video, I will tell you why I bought the Sigma 16F 1.4 lens. This video is not a quality or pixel peeping review, but more about the pros and cons you might have to consider if you want to invest in this lens. I will also emphasize on a feature that not all reviewers emphasize on it about the impact on the individual health and also saving some money from other ways this way of thinking made me bought this lens and a bonus tip for those who stick around till the end so why the sigma 16 f1.4 first the focal length here is 16 millimeter equivalent to 24 millimeter full frame field of view it's a good general lens for talking heads b-rolls and general photography it has a good minimum focus distance which is 25 centimeter somehow like this it gives a great bokeh effect due to the wide aperture f1.4 which is f2.1 full frame equivalent it's great for talking heads shooting b-rolls videos and photos for food plants or anything you want to separate it from the background the autofocus is great almost like the sony's lenses i will show you let me change the lens right now wait it's here let's unbox it together we have paperwork we don't care about those another paperwork also we don't care about those we care about this it's really heavy i think it's heavier than the camera itself we have the lens it's my first time I touch it. The build quality is great. It's robust. It's well manufactured. I'm impressed. It's almost as my hand size. You have the cover, lens cover. So you have this. Is it for sun reflections or reducing sun flares to the lens? Something like that. I think so. I don't know. Maybe. Tell me if I'm wrong or I'm right in comments. Okay, I will change it right now to see the impact. So now we are using the same settings as in the kit lens. So we are at f3.5. So this is the kit lens. Oh, I have to fix it. I don't know if I broke it. And let's use... This is the test now using the Sigma lens. My key lens is set at 100% at f2.0. For sure, I am overexposed right now, and you will notice that the light spilling on the wall and background. I am now at f1.4, overexposed. For that, I have either to reduce the ISO. I'm at the minimum ISO now. I can change it less than 125. I think it's time to reduce the light. This is now after reducing the brightness of the lights. They are now at 20% and we have less to no 
leakage on the background. I don't know what to say. This is an impressive lens. I will tell you why. Right now I'm at f1.4, 10%, just 10% for my lighting. Imagine, I was using 100% and I am barely at the zero balance exposure so it's like I was barely exposed in a good way that's impressive I think I have to reduce it to F maybe F2 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 is good F2 is good I think right now that's that's incredible the test now is using the kit lens my lights are at 100% brightness we have so much light leakage and I am well exposed. This is the test now using the kit lens. My lights are 20%. We have no leakage, but now I'm underexposed. F1.4, all lights are on. I'm like an alien right now. So the reaction you saw, it's my first reaction to this lens. I actually didn't want to work with the lens. I want to record my first reaction with you as a beginner point of view, how much he's gonna be impressed with the lens quality or what can gives to you. So I'm really now noticing the background defocus or the bokeh, the amount of light needed to be well exposed is reduced severely, drastically. I don't know if you feel what I'm feeling right now. I'm trying to express myself. I'm not the best in English and actually I like the combination of the lens with the camera now I feel that I'm really have a camera I know that's a small camera but usually when you think about a camera you think about something a little bit big and you have those big lenses and something like that the build quality is great and it weighs around 405 grams compared to the 364 gram to the ZV-E10. The extra weight could play a good role in stabilization for handheld shooting. The autofocus is great, almost like the Sony's lenses. Now it's still picking my eye. Still picking my eye. The autofocus is great. The Sigma also offers a sharp looking image compared to the kit lens. Sharper means crispier, means more handsomeness. The price is between 350 to 400 euros, it's great value lens compared to other brands with same features. I will fastly state the disadvantages, then I will return to the most important advantages. First, it's not stabilized, so we will need to use Catalyst Browse or Gimbal for moving videos. Second, fixed focal length, it could be too wide for certain shooting scenarios. However, I made a video where I could transform this 16 millimeter to 63 millimeter in video shooting mode. So check it out after this video. Something to bear it in mind is to get an ND filter to not change your settings in bright situation due to the wide aperture. I still didn't get one, but for sure after I saw the results now, I definitely going to buy a new one. So what I did right now is I removed the ball head because the camera is always tilting because of the weight for the lens. Also bear in mind that you have to get a better tripod, not like that tripod that I'm using it right now it's now more expensive setup and also heavier here's the most important aspects about this lens the low light performance is great using this lens thanks to the f1.4 aperture that will lead to a positive cascading effects you will have to be aware of I will change drastically your decision to this lens or any wide aperture lens. I don't know if you are like me, I always wonder in most lighting videos, people mentioning that they put their lights on 20-30% brightness to not overexpose the subject and to avoid the light leakage on the background. I have tried the 20-30% lighting settings, my shot was severely underexposed. I will show you now. So this is now using the kit lens on the widest aperture at 3.5 with 16 millimeter focal length. I'm using the same lighting settings that I used with the Sigma 10% 10% I will show you it's 10% and 10% here and I am severely underexposed I'm really in darkness exposure balance is minus 0 0.7 minus 0 0.3 minus 1 let's go back to the Sigma to our champ the problem not because you have a small light Maybe this is one of the reasons, but the problem is that the kit lens at the widest focal length 16 mm has f3.5 that's equivalent to f5.25 full frame. This is a tight aperture in low light situation cutting so much light from entering to the sensor that's why you need to put your lights at maximum brightness or closer to the subject leading to the annoying light leakage and shadows on the wall behind you. 
thus losing some of the charm you have created with the RGB lights in the background because of the light leakage. It will be also harder to get rid of the shadows, especially if you have a tight room or tight space. To solve the problem, you will have to either get more RGB lights and invest in bigger lighting setups, which could be costly and not feasible to your room and the space in your room, or you will need to get a wide aperture lens like this beast here. That's a great value more than the previous solution from my point of view, especially in tight situation and tight room, allowing you to achieve the same look in less brightness. Then you will have more room to tweak your lights. You will have a really good lens, not only like lighting gears. Keeping in mind, shooting in some picture profiles require the shot to be overexposed for the best results. This is something I have learned from a couple of days ago, but I'm still understanding what does exactly means, why and how to achieve that. For that, don't miss out and subscribe to the channel and stay tuned when I figure it out for sure I will have a video on it. So what about the individual health and environmental aspects? Besides the stated facts before, you will not be bothered from the light coming from the LED panels because you are again using less light. Your eyes will be healthier for long term use. Always think about your health. Don't forget that less brightness means less power needed, means less electricity needed, which is, will accumulate over time leading to higher electricity bills and more damage to the environment. But hmm, maybe manufacturing one lens will cost more and more harmful to the environment. This is something to think about. For those who stick around until the end, this is a bonus tip for you. Another tip in general for prime lenses is that when connecting accessories to the lens like the small teleprompter, you don't need to worry about damaging the motor, your setup is always ready to go, just press record. This is not the case when using the kit lens where you have to be aware about connecting something when it's turned off. You have first to turn the camera on, then the lens will be expanded, then you connect the accessories on to not damage the motor. So guys, that's all for today. Go and check other videos on the ZBA 10 on my channel. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more interesting content. Comment below if you have any question. Don't choose wrong. See you in the next video. Peace.